Hi, I'm Dr. Ali Hushman. Rowan University is committed to educating the public about the importance of higher education in our state and region. That's why we are proud to support the important programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Valley Bank, ADP, a comprehensive provider of human resources technology and services, Rowan University, educating New Jersey leaders, partnering with New Jersey businesses, transforming New Jersey's future, Johnson & Johnson, Summit Medical Group, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Promotional support provided by AM970, The Answer, and by New Jersey Family Magazine and NJFamily.com. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You, you got it? this? Here it is, man. Look at it. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> I don't care how good you are or how good you think you are. There is always something to learn. Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. I love that music. This is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. This young man is Carlos Laniacs, who is president and CEO of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Essex, Hudson, and Union County. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you for having me, Steve. How long have you been doing this? It's been a blessing. I've been here for a decade, at Big Brother, over a decade for Big Brothers Big Sisters, so I appreciate you calling me young. <laughs> you are uh, young. You're a young man. Um, uh, and you're doing good things. By the way, describe the organization. I know it. Mm -hmm. Others know it from you being with us in the past. But tell folks what you do. For sure. Uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters has been around for over a century based on a universal human need that every child needs a positive, regular adult in their life, in their corner. And over a decade ago, we started our program in Essex, Hudson, and Union County based on hope and possibility, but without a formal program. And in 2008, little did we know that the financial world, world, world would collapse, mm -hmm. but we had a couple of angel investors, Josh Weston, Ray Chambers, the Simon Foundation, Les Quick, Rose Cali, that allowed us to launch into um, our maiden voyage, mentoring young people based out of Newark and Jersey City. A decade later, we've served several thousand kids. We've grown tenfold in our program, and now we're, we're celebrating that, that momentum with new corporate partners, a lot of our mutual friends. Who are some of the friends? Absolutely. So ADP for sure has been a, a, a stalwart for our organization. And as a newfound friend, Valley National Bank and Ira and I, uh, Yvonne, they've been extraordinarily supportive as we lit, uh, catalyze our growth in different counties. We cover Essex, Hudson, and Union, but they're really helpful to grow our program in a Bigs and Blue pr partnership. Bigs and Blue, talk in about Union that. County. Absolutely. So we, we, uh, we launched in partnership with the Union County Chosen Freeholders, their current chairman the and the government. Their of Union County. Absolutely. Go ahead, because they do not have a county executive, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead. And what they did essentially was, was they, they, they saw the best practices that we were able to do in Essex Hudson. The freeholders. The freeholders did, and they solicited a public private partnership in partnership with uh, Valley National to grow our Bigs and Blue program, knowing that crime prevention, the best way to, crime, to prevent crime is to make sure it doesn't happen in the first place. So, with the power of one to one mentoring, all it takes is four hours a month for one year to become a big brother, big sisters, sister. And evidence shows that negative things decrease while positive outcomes increase when we get on the front end of our young people's lives. Tenth anniversary. You know, <laughs> you, you blink and, and, and a decade passes and you realize the mission is at a whole other level, it has its own wonderful momentum. We're simply manifesting the good intention and good uh, interest of our uh, volunteers and manifesting it into the lives of our children, knowing that every single child has this innate God-given ability and potential to manifest itself. But yet, they're sometimes thrown into complicated situations, chaos that is thrust upon them without their control. And we get young people with demographics that may determine certain destinies. And we know we can rewrite that history. Be more specific. Demographics. 29% of our young people have parents who are incarcerated. 29%. The, you know, and and the, the, the statistics are strong, the strong correlation to negative outcomes related to that uh, truth. Um, and then we have a third of our young people uh, referred to us by DCPMPs. Basically, the state is saying the, social, the state social work system needs to take an interest in these young people's lives. And frontline case managers, on behalf of the state, are referring them in disproportionate numbers to Big Brothers Big Sisters because they see the power of what one-to-one -one mentoring can be all the about. The male piece of this, male mentor, is critical, especially because? We have so many young boys 
who need positive, regular adults to be in their lives. We have, over, we have hundreds, nearly 1,000 young men, young boys on our wait list. And, wait we don't list. Have, and we don't have enough men stepping up. All it is is four hours a month, an hour a week, to reroute the, the narrative for our oh, communities. Put up the website. Well, the, our team is so good. They, they have it up there right now. <laughs> Give it again, Carlos. How many hours? Four hours a month, one hour a week is the basic requirement. And if we do our job right as an organization, and we play matchmaker and we thoughtfully support with case managers, our staff are just amazing. They are the backbone of our mission. This will not feel just like a program. This will become part of your life. So on average, our, our, our community-based mentoring relationships last about three years long. And so after a year of the program, people just don't toss up their hands saying we're done with the program, they become naturally part of each other's lives. Both the big and the little have a lot um, of benefit on this. And I'll also say that in a recent Gallup um, a research study, corporations are seeing that this is important for the next class of employers. 70%, according to Gallup, of employees are disengaged in, in their current employment, mm -hmm. which is why millennials won't stay in a job more than 25 months. And so as a corporate engagement strategy, to have um, impact that is connected to the community is what the next crop of uh, staff members and employees will need and require to so be successful. So I understand, understand it, Carlos. So younger people working in corporations who are connected to your organization, yeah. big brothers, big sisters, they will have their younger people and others volunteer to play these mentors, to be mentors, and that's a more rewarding experience beyond the work itself of working for the corporation, the organization, whatever? Absolutely. So Gallup highlighted some truths, including the fact that the, the millennial class of employees want to feel that their company cares about bigger purpose, not just the bottom line. And they right. care about the communities in which they are, exist. And so Big Brothers Big Sisters is a very tangible way to point to that. And there's an economic imperative there, which is why we have so many great corporations stepping up and, and have been there allowing us to, to land two things, mentors and money, the two things that drive our organization. Well, real quick, I'm bigs and blue, right? Uh, cops involved? 100%. Okay, so explain. We, we mm -hmm. did a whole series. You may or may not have picked it up on police minority relations. Absolutely. And I'm thinking to myself right now, bigs and blue conflict, the minority community, disproport a high percentage of, yeah. I shouldn't say that, too many right. situations right. involving police and minority community, particularly with men, right. young men. How does this program help? There's so, this is a highly complex issue in our society, and we're facing this straight on. And blame doesn't solve. And, and, it's, and it's so many multi-layers, but what we do in our program is we humanize the other. The cop understands that this is a child. The child understands this is a human being. And at the end of the day, there's, there's a commonality. There's an opportunity to build a bridge between two um, sects of our community that may feel opposed. And we're just one incident away from, in our communities from anything negative happening. And then if you humanize the other, things may neutralize a little quicker. And we see the power prevention in, in a crime prevention strategy. And this is why me mentoring is a critical element of that to, as well. For the chat here, how rewarding has this been for you? It's been, I mean, a decade passes and you don't even realize that this is a blessing. This is a sincere blessing. It's also an opportunity for me to pay it forward. We have had mentors in our lives. I know you have and I have when I had Crossroads. I dropped Some out of high school. Same one. Absolutely. The one I'm thinking. Absolutely. Ray Chambers did a lot for you, did a lot. For, he Absolutely. helped start. A lot of the young people and others who work with us for a long time don't even know um, Ray, who Ray is. Yeah. Google Ray Chambers, one of the most extraordinary philanthropists in the state, this nation. Absolutely. He provided seed money to create the not-for-profit corporation that still runs this operation, the Caucus Educational Corporation. He was there for you as well. Absolutely. And in, in very critical ways that are on record and those are off record. And those are the things. A lot things, of advice offline. Advice and counsel and also just knowing that someone's there when you need it. And it's not just Ray. It was a coalition of people that were sure. really blessings. And also in my personal testimony in high school, I dropped out of Montclair High School but yet went back in because we had positive adult mentors who said the same thing that my mom said, but they didn't have to. They were not blood related. They stepped into my life and they rerouted my trajectory. Real quick, greatest leadership lesson you've learned to date is? To be yourself when you lead and stay true to that. Stay focused to your North Star, whatever that may be, and the things that um, hit challenges along the way. As long as you stay focused to the North Star, everything else is, is, um, is a small bump. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir. You're helping a lot of kids, a lot of people. You're helping entire world. Carlos Laniax, thanks so much, buddy. Stay Appreciate right there. We'll be right back right after this. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ph.D. and follow us on Twitter 
at Steve Adubato. Fire and glass. Imagine being a young person and being told that you can do something with these two elements. They pick up the piece of glass and they start to melt it. They start to create a liquid out of a solid. That's a magical thing that happens. They're learning chemistry, but they don't really realize that. They start to twirl the melted glass onto a mandrel, and all of a sudden they've created a bead. They're now an artist. Well, I tell you what, Glassroot's doing some good stuff, and uh, the young lady we have right here knows all about it. She's Barbara Heisler, CEO of Glassroots. Glassroots is? A youth-serving arts organization in Newark, New Jersey. What are we looking at right now? So Glassroots uses the glass arts to interact with young people and introduce other um, uh, skills. So students come in to work with glass, but they end up learning math and science and business so? and entrepreneurship. Explain that. So glass is a really interesting material in and of itself. Um, all of the arts are transformative, but glass in particular provides the opportunity to work with a material that's an amorphous solid. Mm. It, it's, it's neither liquid nor solid. And imagine all the opportunities that that gives to explore what can happen with it. Um, and then once they understand the properties of the material they're working with, then creating and inventing gives them the opportunity to move into a whole new space um, to create businesses, to understand business skills as they get older, and to create new visions of their future. It's about leadership. It's about entrepreneurism, if you will. It's about all kinds of collaboration. Um, but the other thing I'm fascinated by and reading about, because I know your organization well, by the way, I have a beautiful blue vase that your team, I was speaking at a Horizon Foundation event right. with a group of not-for-profit leaders, right. and you were one of them. I was there. And that was the gift I got. You got an award from Glassroots. So it was it's fabulous. To, um, it's Glassroots, that's one of our, uh, we actually work as entrepreneurially as we teach. Actually, there's nothing that we teach that we don't do ourselves. And so one of our sources of income are the awards <clears throat> that we make, the products that we make, um, the, um, the commissions that we fulfill. Uh, right, it's, commissions. So if you go into the, um, one of the big hotels in Newark right now, there's an eight foot by 10 foot mural. It's a triptych of Edison's um, ticker tape. Yeah. And that was made by our staff and students. Is that true? It is. You were it's commissioned beautiful. to do that. We were commissioned to do that. And so we, um, through that, are able to not only show students how we create products, but how we market them and how we um, earn the, the monies to, to run the programs that we run. So interesting. Uh, how about this? The other part of this, which is about growth and talk about being entrepreneurs, there's a Glassroots 2020 campaign that I want to understand more about. Uh, you're raising a little over $2 million to do what and for what? So Glassroots has been in a great little space um, on Bleecker Street in Newark space. for um, 12 years of our 17 years. And we've really outgrown it. Uh, right now, if a school wants to come on a trip from you know, Middlesex County, for example, uh, they call up their school board and say, we need a school bus. <clears> and the, the school says, well, you're going to bring a school bus full of students, 55 students, <laughs> right? And we say, sorry, That's we can only take space. 25. Right. So in our new space, uh, we're moving to what will be known as the Newark Arts Commons. The Newark Arts Commons. It, we are reimagining oh, the old St. Michael's Hospital on the corner of Central Ave and MLK Martin Luther in King. Newark. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Boulevard. That's right. And um, in our new space, each one of our studios looking at it right now. will that's be awesome. able to, oh, that's exciting. Each one of our studios will be able to seat 30 students. So a full classroom of students can come and learn um, flame working or glass blowing or mosaics or fused glass or interact with our gallery. We're going to have the Newark Museum Gallery at Glassroots, a glass arts gallery at Glassroots or learn about shipping and handling through our relationship with Crozier Fine Art Handlers, or work in our scientific glass studio, which is the way that glass can make uh, a living, it, not just as an artist, 
but scientific glasses, the glass that's used in pharma and chem labs, and young people working in our shop, our working shop, will be able to walk into jobs. But before I end, I'm curious about a couple of things. Who are the young people that participate and are engaged in Glassroots? So in our um, academic year-long programs, we um, focus mostly on Newark and the communities right around Newark. Right. Because those programs require that students can come to our, stu our studios at least once a week. In our workforce programs, we look at young people ages 18 to <clears throat> 25, 26, 30. You know, that group of young people yep. that if they don't move into something productive, don't move into something productive. So we're, our workforce programs look to engage um, people from greater Essex County. And then for our field trip programs, our exposure programs, our SPARC programs, people come from out throughout the state. Before I let you out, I gotta ask you, what are we looking at right now? So these- First shot of this team? Go ahead. It's the autumn, so it it's It is, time, we're taping in October, It's early time October. for people to <clears throat> buy their pumpkins. They're hand-blown at Glassroots in Newark, and all of our products, a percentage of the income, goes to support our programs. Glassroots.org, we have an online store. Been up the whole time. People should buy. Look at you. It's plugging. a good thing. I love it. It's a not-for-profit. It's a not-for-profit. <laughs> As are we. But highly entrepreneurial. Very entrepreneurial. Always, right? Absolutely. Listen, Barbara Warren, thank you for joining us. And and I know you're making a difference every day. We, we say we do a series called Making a Difference. Well, you make a difference every day with you and your colleagues at Glassroots. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. And thank you for that blue vase. I had to report it in public broadcasting that we got, which is at our office. I want to be clear. It's not okay. in our home. It's okay. good. Thank That's you. Good. We should have a big sign that says, <laughs> made at Glassroots. Look at you plugging again. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this, talking about plugging. Thanks. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Please be joined by Dr. Tracy Scheller medical director at the Graf Center for Integrated Medicine. She's also a gynecologist at Englewood Health. Good to see you. Thank you. That's a fascinating title first in terms of the Graf Center for Integrated Medicine, but the gynecologist part, which part comes first? Sure. So I am an obstetrician gynecologist and I delivered- an OBGYN. OBGYN. Right. For 12 years delivering babies at Englewood Hospital. Then I stopped the obstetrical part of my life and decided to do GYN only. So I started my own practice in gynecology, but then I went back to school and worked on a master's of science in nutrition at Columbia. And that got me involved with integrative medicine and Englewood Hospital, became part of their advisory board at the Graf mm -hmm. Center. And then I started a fellowship in integrative medicine. You, you keep using the term integrated medicine, yes. and I don't want to assume, doctor, that everyone knows what it means. What okay. does it mean? Give us an example of it. Sure. So that is bringing together conventional medicine and complementary therapies in a coordinated and evidence-based way to help the healing process. Can we make that a little more grounded yes. in someone says, oh, that's it. So yes. for example. For example, someone has diabetes or right. high blood pressure. So you, someone you, says, I'm just gonna treat it with some medicine. Exactly, their doctor prescribes medications, but yet they're overweight, obese. They don't have good nutritional skills, they do not exercise, and they're crazy stressed at work. And integrative medicine would incorporate? Exactly, so we talk about the root of all their problems. We put the patient at the center, hmm. say, hey, let's invest you in your own health process and talk about some modalities that you can work on to improve your own health. So let's get you into to nutritional counseling. Let's talk about what exercise you're doing. And, oh, you're very stressed? Let's talk about meditation, mindfulness. What things are you doing for yourself? Massage therapy, maybe acupuncture, Reiki, and introducing those modalities that have evidence and have been shown to be quite helpful. I'm curious about something. In terms of integrated medicine and its connection to 
your work as a gynecologist, or the OB side as well. Give me some examples there. I'm curious about that. Absolutely. In obstetrics, <clears throat> when we talk about the stressors of being pregnant, uh, postpartum, the changes that we go through hormonally, having a new child, postpartum depression plays a role, integrative uh, resources like meditation, mindfulness can help people with a lot of those changes that are going on in their life. Uh, with gynecology, people going through perimenopause, menopause, hot flashes. What does that have to do with integrative medicine? So acupuncture, meditation, and women tend to gain weight and they're concerned about their weight gain and um, how they feel. And so talking to them about nutritional changes, getting involved, motivating them to exercise and help them feel better and whole and healthy again. Curious about this from a personal and professional point of view, given your work uh, as a gynecologist, and then having this role uh, and connected to integrative medicine, how much more reward? Not not that it's not very rewarding to be involved in the OB uh, GYN side, but how is this different for you as a medical professional on a personal level? Personally, I'm sleeping at night, <laughs> <laughs> so it helps me be a better doctor, a better mother, and I feel more rewarded because I can look at somebody as a whole and let them know that I'm listening, not only to their gynecologic problem and their needs, but really what else is going on in their life, and how can I help motivate them to make a difference and change in their lifestyle to make them feel better. Really rewarding. Very rewarding. Uh, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, where? Pottsville, Pennsylvania, home of Yingling Brewery. <laughs> uh, oh, now we got it. Okay, you need to make a beer connection. I like that. <laughs> yes, and then I lived in Houston, uh, Texas, <clears throat> and that's where I went to medical school. How did we get you in Jersey? My husband, who's Australian, he was living and working uh, in New York at J.P. Morgan, and that's how I came up here so that we could be together. I'm always fascinated when I can tell someone's not from New Jersey. I can't always tell, but... You could tell. I don't know if I could tell, but I was like, how'd she get to Jersey? Real quick, um, misconceptions about integrated medicine include? That you have to have a disease to, in order to meet with an integrated medicine physician. And no, you really have to think about what is your goal for your own health. I don't think people take a lot of time to think about that. They see their doctor when they have a problem. But let's talk about how you want to make change so that you can be healthier. You can be around with your loved ones and make your life better. But a couple of minutes here left. When it comes to integrative medicine, to what degree does it have the potential, doctor, to, to have people using less, quote unquote, medication? That's the goal. Fewer drugs. Fewer drugs, fewer side effects. And if these modalities work, great. If they don't, we have other options. But why don't we try the less invasive options first? And, and real quick, how does it change potentially change someone's lifestyle moving forward? They're going to develop better lifestyle habits, right? So it's not about being on a diet or just exercising for a short period of time. It's about creating new healthy habits for themselves, their family members, teaching their children, and, and being happier. I'm curious about something. Um, the whole mentality that some have, and I'll include myself, there are times or a situation you're feeling there's some illness or you're feeling whatever. Give me a pill. You look for the pill. You, you, you reach out for quick. a physician, a quick fix. Okay, symptoms are one thing. But you're talking about something much deeper than that. We're looking at the root cause of a problem. Some people may have stomach disorders, distress, and it may be because of stressors that are going on at work, something that's going on in their family life. But we didn't have time to get into the root of those problems because we're too worried about fixing, oh, why do you have stomach ache? Right, so what you said about diabetes, when you start it, if someone said, oh, you have diabetes, this is the medication, but there are lots of underlying issues that are connected to the diabetes, which is, in fact, what integrated medicine is about. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Tracy Scheller. Yes. Is medical director at the Graf Center for Integrative Medicine, uh, gynecologist at Englewood Health. I want to thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. You shared a lot of valuable advice. 
Great. Thank you for having well me. Uh, this is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. Make sure you check us out next time. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Valley Bank, ADP, Rowan University, Johnson & Johnson, Summit Medical Group, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. In the fabric of America, they are the toughest threads. One of the first things they learned was the code that every service member lives by. Leave no one behind. Now all of us need to live by it too, because some veterans are being left behind. 20 of them take their own lives every day. Learn how to be there for a veteran at betherefoveterans.com. Honor the code. Be there. Leave no one behind.